Hello, 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 everyone. I know it has been a long time since I have done um, an interview with a filmmaker. With And now I don't have just a filmmaker. This man is a man, when I say a man of many hats, a man of many talents, it is not an understatement. So for those of you that are seeing this new for the first time, I am Alice Fuller. And some of you may know me uh, from my entertainment side, my entertainment days uh, as a blogger, an entertainment uh, blogger. Some of you may know my what I call my twin <laughs> on a whole nother channel, uh, mostly in social media marketing. But right now we are going to focus on my entertainment side. And I want to introduce to you Derek Simmons. Now, Derek, I'm not, I'm sorry, Derek Simmons. Derek Simmons, okay, is in Hollywood. I think people will refer to him as a not not, not it's not even a triple threat. What is what is it? What do you call it? We a quadruple threat. We're talking about a filmmaker. We're talking about a stunt man. We're talking about an actor. And of course, there's probably some writing in there too. So this is a very, very talented guy. And today we're going to talk about his new film called Nobody's Perfect. And I also want to delve a little bit into his background as far as uh, stunt work, because I think a lot of people overlook how important that job really is. So, Derek, talk yes. to the people. Introduce hello. yourself a little bit more. Yes. Hello. How you doing? So it feels good to be here. Um, my name is Derek Simmons. Uh, I'm a producer, director, actor, stuntman, stunt coordinator writer, uh, you name it, across the board. Uh, my, my bread and butter is stunts, but we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about my first film. I mean, not my first film. We're going to talk about Nobody's Perfect, which is my newest release. And um, it's about uh, a woman who meets the man of her dreams with the perfect lifestyle and image. And once they get married, it turns into a nightmare. Hmm. Now, Derek? Uh, might I ask what inspired <laughs> this type of movie? <laughs> well, I wanted to do a movie with substance, you know, something that's going to touch people. Um, this is my third movie. My first two movies were romance comedies, uh, okay. Jump Offs and Women Do It Better. And I just wanted something more serious, something that was going to, you know, speak to the people and, and leave my, my message. So. Okay. So tell me first, how did you how did you begin to get into filmmaking or the industry as a whole? Okay, yeah, I started off um, with a Burger King. An agent saw me in a showcase when I was a kid and asked me what I like to uh, be in a commercial, and I said sure. So they sent me down to an audition. Uh, I got the call back, and it was a national a national commercial called Burger King. And uh, I remember when I when I was doing a commercial, they asked me, uh, would you like to join the union? Would you like to join SAG? I was like, SAG, what's that? So it's the Screen Actors Guild. If you want to pursue acting, join. So I asked them, how much is it? <laughs> and they, they said $635. I was like, $600? Do you know how many pair of sneakers I can buy for $600? You know, because that, that's where my mind was. You know, the biggest thing I can do is buy sneakers. So um, I did the commercial. <laughs> And uh, my first check was for, just for filming the commercial, was for $1,800. And I said, you know, maybe I should join SAG. And that's how I started. Wow. A Burger King commercial. Set the foundation for it all, huh? Yes, it did. You know, it's, it's kind of funny how, pe here's the thing. It's kind of funny how people who want to really get in the game <laughs> sometimes struggle. And then the people who just kind of fall up in it <laughs> destiny it is so you can't even hate on it <laughs> you just it, it is what it is okay so starting with that you did you get the acting well, bug then no no I, I had the acting bug already i attended junior high school of performing arts so i knew what i wanted to do from a young age wow okay. um, drama, drama was my major um i don't think i i I mean, I wanted to do it. I didn't think I was going to be able to make a living doing it. I don't know whether that, that was, you know, it never occurred to me that I would be living my dream today. Okay. So 
I, I continued. Yeah, I continued and um, doing uh, commercials and uh, TV shows, and I tried to break into the stunt. I, I saw some stunts being done. They started pulling me out of scenes when I was uh, doing the acting. And I said, why are you pulling me out? And they said, we have to bring in a stunt double. And I used to say, I can do my own stunts. And they said, no, no, we need a professional. We, have, we need some guys for a couple of years. And finally, I got a call. Uh, I was filming New York Undercover. Wow, but, that was a popular show. Man, yeah. that, was, that was Thursday night on lock. <laughs> yes, yes. And I was playing Little G's tutor on the show. And... Well, it was only one episode. Okay. <laughs> so I was playing Little G's tutor on the show, and uh, I intercepted a drug deal or something like that, and they, were, they had to throw me off a bridge. So I guess they called the stunt coordinator and said, we need a stunt double for this guy. And he saw my name, and he was like, nah, he can do his own stunts. And once I did it, the phone started ringing. Wow. Working every sense. Wow. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> well, you know, I'm thinking as a producer, I'm like, well, that's a but that's a little piece of budget we can save. Absolutely. <laughs> we got two, we got an actor and a stunt man. Oh, this what else can we buy? That's right. <laughs> actor that can do his own stunts, you know. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. so now basically that still puts you in that realm of filmmaking, but it still is kind of a a leap. Not a big leap, but still a little right. leap to go from stunt making to producing film. So how how did that start? Right, and and it's a process. It's, it's definitely a process because I started off as a kid. I just wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. I never thought about directing, producing, writing. I mean, I could write. I was into the music where I was writing music, but it wasn't one of my goals. Mm -hmm. So from acting to stunts. Um, I was inspired, I, 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 a friend of mine uh, uh, invited me to do one of his short films. And uh, he said, yeah, can you come on down? I want you to act in my short film. Now I had only did big stuff, you know, Hollywood stuff. I've never done independent. So I showed up at the set and it was <laughs> five people. And I was like, where's the rest of the crew? They were like, this is it. I was like, this is it? So I was inspired because, you know, I worked on a short and I, and I was like, wow, I can do this. I had to write my own scripts and I networked with the cameraman. And, and uh, when it was time for me to shoot my first movie, Jump Offs, I, I got into it and ignorance kind of pushed me through it because the cameraman said, all right, you, you got your equipment, you got your script and you know a lot of actors, let's shoot your film. And I said, yeah, but I don't have an editor. So he said, I'll edit your film. I said, you know how to edit? He said, yeah, sure. I said, what do you use? He said, Final Cut. Final Cut. I said, okay, great. This guy knows what he's doing. He's going to edit my film. So we start shooting. Two weeks in, I asked him, hey, we got all this footage. When are you going to start editing? He goes, no, I'm not going to edit your film. I'm going to teach you how to edit. I said, no, no, I don't want to. I don't. This is my first directorial. I want a professional to edit. He goes, no, 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 I'm going to teach you. I was like, I can't believe you. You know, I was so upset, but it was a blessing in disguise because once I learned how to edit, it made me a better director. I knew exactly what I needed. And I wouldn't have learned, I, no way I would have started filming had I known I didn't have an editor. Okay, okay. Can, can, can we rewind <laughs> that for a second? Wait a minute. So, <laughs> that's so typical Hollywood. That's so typical. So, he tells you, dude, I got you. I yes. can edit your movie. Not a pro. I got you. Not a problem. Right. But then he realized, I'm, I'm really going to have to edit this movie. <laughs> so yeah. maybe I should teach him how to edit. And then maybe, <laughs> I'm like, well, why didn't he tell you from the start that he was going to teach you how to edit as a, po you know what, you, never mind. You know, if he did, I, I wouldn't have shot the film. You wouldn't have really? Because it was too much, you know. I was like, "Hey, I'm starring. I wrote, produced, directed. Yeah, I'm starring in this movie, and I I know nothing about editing. So right. for him to say, I'm going to teach you how to edit. I'm like, I have enough on my plate. I'm wearing all these hats. You but know what? That's lesson because that's, that's very true. Now we have a we have a similar backgrounds. If I had not learned how to shoot and edit, 
and write and basically be a one woman show to a degree, you appreciate every part of the production. You appreciate every crew member on the production. When you come in only being the actor or you come in sometimes only being the producer or you come in sometimes only being the videographer or the, or the camera guy, you don't get a full scope of what, how, this is basically a big old puzzle. It's a big puzzle. And without, what, without that guy's talent, without that guy's hustle, without that individual's, uh, in, uh, without that individual's uh, know-how and savvy, you can't bring this movie together. This is true. So that said, now, you're how many movies deep now? Three? I'm three. Three more. Okay, so I'm sorry. Something is in my eye, and I'm trying to act like it's not there, but it's like it wants, <laughs> it wants a film credit, and it's trying to make an appearance. I'm sorry. No so problem. three movies deep. Right. So the first movie, right, the first movie I shot with one camera. Ooh. And then I had to edit, and it was, it was a nightmare. Ooh. But going through the hardship, the second movie I came back with two cameras, it was so much easier. But, you think? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I learned this filmmaking is a process. My whole industry life is a process. And yes. But that's, I think that's a beautiful thing because in, on one instance, a, a lot of filmmakers now, now what I'm about to say could be argued, but I think a lot of people who get into the industry get, get kind of caught up on, um, I need to have, a, you need to go to film school. I went to film school and it's just like, yeah, you went to film school and I went to the school of hard knocks. And while you were in class, I was actually on set. I was actually doing it and learning it at the same time while you were still taking the test. <laughs> so I think there's a lot to be said for individuals who literally have that on the job training. I am not negating for anybody who's saying in the back of their minds, or what she's trying to say about me who went to film school. You, I think both are beautiful. However you do it. It's just sometimes people who have, who went one direction, have a tendency to sometimes to look down their nose <laughs> That's at right. folk who uh, who basically learned it and learned it. You you still spent what two years two years working. You spent right. two years in a program, and I'm still out here. I got my hustle on. So both hustles are to be respected. It's right. kind of like uh, I'm kind. You know what? I'm kind of thinking it's like the Spike Lee versus Tyler Perry. Right. You went to film school. You learned it through the hard knocks, but we need both of y'all technically to make more films, especially. I love the fact that you made a uh, romantic comedies for real. Right. Yes. See, here's what I like about that. Generally, when we think about romantic comedies, we always think of females. We always, always, always think of females because, you know, we like to have romance in our lives. Not that men don't. That's not what I'm saying, fellas. <laughs> it's not what I'm saying. <laughs> But we know who rushes to the romantic comedy movies. We do. So when you started out, what was it about a, rom uh, a romantic comedy? Or was it more or less, I wanted to make a comedy and I just kind of integrated romance into it? Well, the, uh, the first movie was about players. So players in relationship, it was about these five guys who were playing their, their women and they were all different types of players. And I metaphored it to basketball. I had, a, I had a defensive player who always lied. I had an international player who only dated women outside of his race. Okay. Um, I had a rebound player who only dated <laughs> girls that were on the rebound. So, you know, it was, a, it, it was a relationship movie. I had so much fun doing it. It will always be my baby. When I look at it now, I'm like, oh, the mistakes, the mistakes. But when I did it, it was, it was perfect for me. Okay. <laughs> so which part of the process do you like most and which part of the process do you like least? Um, I would say the editing. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I, I love, I love um, writing and, and, you know, planting that seed and watching it grow on the screen because mm -hmm. uh, to, do the, to do it from beginning to end, it's every, every time I film a movie or one of my own movies, in the middle of it, I want to quit. Every mm -hmm. film, it's just so much work, it's intense. 
And I'm like, oh, I'll never, now I realize why I didn't want to do this before. And I, and I do it. But when it's over, I'm like, I did it. I did it. And I'm like, I'm not going to do it that way anymore. Next time I do it, I'm going to do it. It's going to be easier. But anything that can go wrong as a filmmaker will go wrong. Yep. And you just have to go along with it. The thing yeah. is, you can't quit because all these people that are in your movie or working with you, if you quit, you're, you're deleting all their work. They're like, but we, we work for you. And now you, it's never coming out. You, you didn't complete it. So everything I've done, I've completed. And I'm just coming from, I'm coming from a Hollywood background because I worked on big films and TV shows. So when I get on the little sets, I'm like, gee, I'm used to this stuff being done for me. I'm used to being catered to. But now I have to cater to everyone else. I have to get this thing done. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's a monster. Funny, it's funny that you say that because when, when you start, you started out big. Yes. <laughs> you started out like I got the Burger King. Was it a regional commercial? National? It's national. It's, yeah, national commercial. I mean, big you, hit, you hit the ground running. Yes. While there are still some who have been in Hollywood for, I, we will not put a number on how long you've been in Hollywood, that have yet to book a commercial. From for from from that standpoint, I knew production, but then when right. you when you when you're on a small set and you're doing everything, you're running yes. the cameras, <laughs> and then when you a set and it's just like I don't have to run the cables. Oh uh, no, honey, that's unionized. You do that, you will get in trouble. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> don't touch. Don't do nothing. Just wait yeah. until you get instruction. But you know, I can help do that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, no, that's nope. quite all right. It's good that you have that that foundation, but don't touch that. <laughs> that's not your job. You cannot change that light bulb. You have to wait until <laughs> exactly. you guys come in and take care of that. So when you when you what inspires you outside of realizing that at this point. I'm in the middle of this production. I think that's a that's another element too that a lot of people don't seem to understand is that when you are making a film, in many instances, it can take longer than a month, two months, however long, because especially when you're doing indie films, I know some filmmakers that started one year, lost funding, I didn't have enough money, then you got to come back a year, so later right. and then yep. try and try to get everybody back and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't so you just have to you just have to work with what you have so outside right. of that that initial there are more people depending on me what pushes you through when you're sitting there writing that script and and script writing for a lot of people is just like the part that makes people want to pull their hair out what pushes <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> give you that extra besides knowing I got about uh, 75 people depending on me to get this thing done. What, what pushes me is, is I know I have so much more to give. And, okay. and now I, I've written about 15 scripts, different dramas. So although I have this one in front of me, you know, I have to get this done so I can get to the next one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I just love what I do. I'm living my dream. Um, I'm not afraid to invest in myself because pretty much my, my first three movies, I financed it myself and wow. it's very expensive. It can get very expensive, but if you believe in yourself, you will invest in yourself. That's true. That's true. But you got to have balance though. I find yes. that if, if we're having a real conversation, because I, I think when you, when you're so, it's great to be passionate, yes. but there comes a time too, when you have to, you have to, you have to eat. You, st <laughs> you right. have to rest, hopefully someplace that has a roof, four walls, and some <laughs> flooring. <laughs> right. Right. How did you find that balance? Because you can't, starting out, it's hard to be all just about the movie when you still have to support yourself. So how did you find that balance? Well, I still work in between. And uh, 
as a stuntman, I work almost every week. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a working actor stuntman. I'm not just someone who's going out to auditions and like, ah, my next job is in a, in a month or my next job is in two months. So even if I don't work, I have residuals coming in for the last 20 something years. Man, you're, so, going, you're, going, you're going to inspire somebody with that right there. I'm living my dream and I, you know, I'm blessed. You know, I, I, I truly feel blessed and I'm grateful for every day. Every day I work, even when it's small things, but I know that there's a purpose. Well, and then too, here's the, here's the other part of that too. Now, <clears throat> people will often say it's all about who you know when you when you get into Hollywood. Well, you came out the gate kind of strong. <laughs> so yes. when you start talking about coming, for those coming out to Hollywood or already in Hollywood, what did you have a plan? It's just like, look, I've got to meet. I've got to meet or be around this set of people so that I can get to this? Or was it about I got to hone my craft first and then meet the right people? Did you have a plan? Okay. I didn't have a plan. This is my destiny. I didn't have a plan. <laughs> I, you know what it is? It's, now, networking is very important. And that's kind of one of my weak points because I don't network. I'm just myself. And I meet a lot of people. And if, when people meet you, if they like you, they'll bring you in their circle yeah. in your work. If they don't like you, they'll only call you if they really, really need you and you have that talent that they can't find any place yeah. else. It's true. So <laughs> I, I happen to be a likable person. Yeah. And I get along with everyone. And people know if they if, if I show up at a set, it's business. I go there, I work, I'm gonna be there on time, I'm gonna be prepared, I'm gonna do what I said I can do. Mm -hmm. And acting wise, they're gonna get more than they bargained for because okay. I, I, I feel I can hang with any anyone out there. Okay, well let's talk about nobody's perfect. Right. Now it's it's about domestic violence, which means in many instances, you got to find some people who can really act. Yes. <laughs> yes. How <laughs> crucial was the casting for this particular movie for you? You know, I, 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 I had auditions for this film and there were just, I would say over 500 people came and auditioned for it. And the cast that I got out of it, you know, I'm just so proud of them and, they did a great job and they can use the film for their real, what, you know, their future stars. They're definitely future stars. Um, I had a couple of friends, uh, Ricky Ayala, mm -hmm. um, he's the son of Danny Ayala from Do the Right Thing, Sal, yep. Play Sal. And um, um, Don Wallace, uh, he's also an actor out in Hollywood. And he used to live in New York. He came out to New York and blessed me with his role in the film. and. And the lead actress, um, Lexi Mola, she came in an audition and blew everybody out the water. So, you know, I, I, I'm blessed to be able to recognize talent because that's that's the most important thing. You're gonna get, I get a lot of friends that say, hey man, put, you, put me in your film, put me in your film. <laughs> you know, part, part of saying no, the business. So you, you have to take care of business and you just let them know, I don't have anything for you in this one but we'll see in the future. Okay. So are you the, are you the kind of, uh, are you a, what they call it, a, an actor's director or? Yes. Okay. Explain what that is for people who really, you hear that tossed around a lot. Explain yes, yes. <laughs> what that is to people. Yeah. So being that I'm, being that I'm coming from an actor's background, I kind of understand how to get the actors to do what I want them to do. Um, so when I'm directing, I'm thinking from an actor's um, perspective on how to get them to that place where the role's gonna, where it's gonna be real, where it's gonna feel real, and and they understand their character. So as a as an actor's d director, you you give them a little freedom, but it, it's just more personal. It's more personal than just directing. Okay. And now as a director too, what were some of the, some of the production challenges that you did face as we know you're going to face them on every production and how did you overcome those challenges? Well, every day was a challenge because I was a producer and director. Okay. So, you know, it's, uh, 
it, it felt like one one job. It was one big job. <laughs> you know, uh, I didn't have to check with anyone. But sometimes you get actors that don't show up or they're late. I mean, I had a great cast, but film, uh, you know, I uh, had two cameramen, like one, I can't make it. Or uh, one of my challenges was every morning I had to pick up my lead actress and my cameraman, drive them to the set. We would film all day, whether it's a 10, 12 hour day. And then I had to pack up the equipment and I had to drive them home. So my day was extra long, you know, I would, each wow. one lived in different barrels. So, so even after I finished filming, I knew I wasn't going to be home. Everyone off in different parts of New York City and then go home, rest, and the next day start all over again. So not only, okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> not <laughs> only did you have to produce, direct, and now you had to be the uh, the show, provide not, transportation, the transportation director too. <laughs> you know, I didn't put that on my resume, but yeah, that too. And oh, as a producer, I would say dealing with the union because uh, nobody's perfect. You know, it's a it's a union film shot it through SAG after SAG, and that's a whole different monster than the other films because you know you have to have insurance, mm -hmm. you have to abide by the rules the sad rules there's just so many elements that you have to take care of so it, it, unless you you're really passionate about it you know you're not going to get through it you, you know I, I love what i do but it is it's a headache it's a, it's a lot of work don't do it if you're not looking for work don't do it but if you <laughs> willing to take on the challenges and you finish it's a reward because you're like i accomplished that Mm -hmm. And now I'm looking forward to my next one. I'm just waiting for some investors to come through, but I'm looking forward to bigger and better things and I'm ready. Okay. Now, seeing as how filmmaking has changed dr dramatically over the last, we'll see, I'd say the last seven years, it used, to be, it used to be the big thing was get to Hollywood, get a movie, be on the big screen, you know, be be discovered. <laughs> yes, yes. And now, I now I dare say people are coming into the industry with a new mindset. Like, you know what? I I'm a filmmaker. I don't need necessarily to work within the Hollywood system to make my movie. And what I mean by the Hollywood system, you still got to get your actors and your SAG and all that other stuff. What I'm saying is that that whole notion of it has to be one way to get it done. Because we've right. got so many different options now than you did as a filmmaker just four or five years ago. Could you speak to that a, a second? Oh, very, very true. Very true. Um, Ten years ago, it was. It's a lot different than it is now. Now, you know, if you have your content and you can put your films together or TV shows, and you put it together, we have digital. It's digital distribution. It wasn't like that 10 years ago. Everything was film. It was film. So now sky's the limit. You can do how many, as many takes as you want. And you pick out the best one and you put it out there. But um, it's still, there's still different avenues you have to go through, you know, as far as distribution and everything, you know, you want to make sure your, your movie gets on as many platforms as possible. So um, <clears throat> speaking of the, of the distribution platforms, because Right now, there is such, uh, every, seems like everybody, seems like every network, and I'm talking about not ABC, CBS network, I'm talking about online, from YouTube yes. to Amazon to Netflix. Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many options now to, to stream and get your film directly to your audience, but if you're going that route, what are some of the things you really have to take in consideration? Because if you're new, you know, and somebody slides a little piece of paper across the table, that deal may look good to you, but only because you don't, you don't know, you didn't read the flip side of the paper. So speak, speak to, to, to that for a second, please. Right. And, and those deals are easy because a lot of those deals are, are <clears throat> a lot of those deals are buyouts. So, I mean, these filmmakers who are taking it to the, these companies, 
they're kind of signing off the whole thing just to give it away. And, and they basically just want to get it out, but they're signing it off. And Netflix and all these other companies are making all the money. And they're known as the filmmaker, but <clears throat> they won't see any returns. Wow. It's, it, it really depends. It's all politics. Who represents you? Who's in your film? If, if you have big names in your film, you'll, it's easier to get a deal. You can go to any of these companies and they'll take you in. But if you don't have the names and they want to bring you in, you can believe that you're not going to get a great deal. They're going to they're going to rip you off as much as they can. And you have to decide how much of it do I want to how much do I want to take? Do I do I want to, you know, do I want to give this film away or do I want to hold on to it and have a cut? That brings to mind the film festival circuit. Yeah. <clears throat> when you get into can you talk a little bit about the pros and cons of going the film festival circuit first, uh, is that something that you think filmmakers now can skip altogether? Or is that something that's still so very relevant? And I'm not just talking right. about the big names like Sundance and the con film and all of those. I'm talking about the film festivals that are like uh, 20 miles away, <laughs> you know, the, right. the, local, the local film festivals. Do you right. see there's still, there's still benefit in putting your movie in front of a smaller audience as opposed to, you know, trying to get starting out the gate, a huge audience like at Sundance or Tribeca. Right. right. Yeah. And, and that's catch 22. It's a catch 22 to it. Um, I recommend getting in and getting your film in as many film festivals as possible because it builds up your audience. It builds up your people who have never heard of you. Um, we'll hear of you if you're in the same film festival. You'll meet other film festivals, the networking, um, the exposure, and you just never know who you're going to meet at that film festival. It could be, you know, you, it could be the smallest film festival. You just never know. And I, I just highly recommend you get in, you submit your film and get in as many film festivals as possible. Now, the big film festivals, they have rules. They want to be the first one to screen your film. That's where the catch-22 is because they'll put you on hold and say, has it been screened anyplace else? And you say, if you say yes, they're like, okay, yeah, we're not interested. Um, the big film festivals are also a lot of politics. It's, you really have to know somebody. You have to know the oh. program to get in these film festivals. Okay. So you waste your money sending it to the giant film festivals because of the political stuff you have to go through. All right, so get your film seen by as many people as possible and just keep building and building and building and building. Okay. So that, that said, how can people see uh, your library of films if they're available? Uh, give me your website and, you know, social media. I have to kind of, I, I, I can't leave this conversation and not talk about social media. How uh, is that useful to you as far as an independent filmmaker? It's very useful. Social media plays a big part now as far as getting your news out there. And everybody knows somebody that knows somebody you need to know. <laughs> so social media is the way to go. You know, friends. And, and when you promote your films, you say, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend. Mm -hmm. You know, share this link. And... The more, the more people that know about you, the more your fan base will build up. So social media is very important. I don't think uh, you can make it in the new digital age without a good social media strategy or, or plan or fan base. Are you, are you finding that uh, when you're looking for distribution deals, I've talked to a couple of filmmakers <laughs> wherein they've told me uh, they were able to get a distribution deal because they were able to build an audience before the film festival, after the film festival, because it had so many hits on YouTube. Are you finding that to be more true? Yeah, I, I believe that is true. I believe uh, that's their measurement now. You know, they, they're seeing whether people are interested, people are following you. Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, do people like what they're doing? And when they see that, they see numbers. Okay, yeah. So. And they see, they see dollars, too. That's right. When they see those numbers, they, they're like, more dollars. Okay. So it makes sense. 
Okay, so tell people where they can follow you, your website, you got a fan page or whatever it is, or you're on Twitter, where, where are you? Okay, on Twitter, my name is Derek Simmons, that's D-E-R-R-I-C-K-S-I-M-M-O-N-S. On uh, Instagram, same thing, Derek Simmons. On Facebook, my fan page is Derek Simmons NYC. Um, YouTube, Derek Simmons NYC. Uh, what else? What else? Um, you got a website? My website. Oh, DerekSimmons.com, <laughs> DerekSimmons.net. I respond to all my emails. Um, I have a, my, my production website is Derek Simmons Filmworks. Okay. Um, nobody's Perfect. My, my, all my movies can be seen on, uh, well, Nobody's Perfect. It's on iTunes. It's on Hulu. It's on Amazon. And it's on Xbox. So okay. If, if you're looking for the physical DVD, you go to my website, DerekSimmonsFilmworks.com. All right, uh, people. I, you've heard yeah, it. And, and you've heard it from a, uh, a quadruple threat. <laughs> threat. <laughs> Stuntman, filmmaker, director, producer, writer. Basically, if you learn nothing else from this Hangout, understand you got to put in the work. Yes. At the end of the day, you got to put in the work. And if you can't be passionate about it, even when you're doing the stuff you hate to do or don't like to do, you might, uh, you might just want to uh, get another hustle. <laughs> That's true. And I always say, if you're going to do it for the money, if you're just doing it for the money, you're doing it for the wrong reason, you're going to hate it. And eventually you're going to quit because you're doing it for the wrong reason. Well, uh, you heard it, people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So speaking of sharing this video, please share it with your friends and your frenemies, uh, depending on what kind of relationship you got with them. <laughs> and leave some comments. Be sure to go over to Derek's uh, website, like him, follow him, send him some, some web traffic, and more importantly, support Yes. Support, support, support. Because here's here's the real deal. If we don't support our independent filmmakers, who else will? And so now I'm, uh, our audiences, I, I dare say, have gotten a little lazy because now you can sit at home and watch all and, and just consume all the videos that you want and all the movies that you want. Still, if that's your way of doing things, go over to his website, buy the DVD, Go over and 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 download it legally. <laughs> <laughs> download it legally. So if you see the dude coming in the barbershop in the beauty salon, and he's like, "Look, there's this new filmmaker." Please, Derek Simmons. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> you just say, you know, I'm good. I yeah, I'm I'm good. I'm gonna watch that on on the Hulu. That's that that's how progress gets made, people. That's so right. thank you for watching. And have a great week.